So, a big update to the video earlier today. Jim Rutherford has been hired as the president of hockey operations and current interim GM while the Vancouver Canucks look for another GM. So this, just got to get my take out there. Jim Rutherford, as we know, he is an experienced, experienced guy. He's got the label of winning all these Stanley Cups. He's got the label of building a back-to-back -back Penguin Stanley Cup winning squad. However, towards the end of his tenure, things got a little bit finicky when it came to decision making and what to do with Malkin and Latang. As a result, having his experienced voice in the room as the president and not necessarily the GM, to me, pretty good move. Now, from here on out, I'm going to be playing you the rest of the video I recorded last night, talking about potential GM candidates, Mike Gillis, Lawrence Gilman, we're talking about the Sedins, we're talking about Bergevin, we're talking about a lot of these guys over here. So, because Rutherford is now the president, a lot of the ideas that we brought up yesterday about a co-tandem president-GM thing, it's not really there anymore as Rutherford is now the president, but seeing a buffer between the GM and the Aquilinis up top, it's a pretty good change in pace. So, without further ado, let's go over to the rest of the video here and talk about Vancouver Canucks GM candidates. Ah, <sighs> fine. I guess we'll talk about it. I guess we'll go over all the speculation, all the names that we have seen pop up in these conversations because... You know, I, I didn't really want to make a video like this because when it comes to the spectrum of what the possibilities are, it's so wide that it doesn't really feel necessary, I guess, to even try to narrow it down in the slightest because everything that we have seen about the vacant Vancouver Canucks GM job, it's just kind of all over the place. So this story goes back to the beginning of the week when Francesco Aquilini and Stan Smeal went over to the Vancouver media and had a very big press conference following the firing of Jim Benning and Travis Green. What they pretty much said was that they're going to take their time, they're going to do their due diligence, and they're going to have themselves a boatload of decisions to be making when it comes to deciding who's going to be next at the helm. They also pretty much indicated that a president of hockey operations is going to be something they're considering as well, and all options are on the table, whether that's somebody that has been involved with the team in the past or who is brand new to the organization, they're going to be looking at all the options and try to analyze everybody in the spectrum. This is kind of why I didn't want to talk about this, because saying things like that makes it so that the net is extraordinarily wide, that it doesn't really feel like a valuable conversation when discussing just every name on the face of planet Earth as to whether or not they would actually be candidates. But either way, we had ourselves an article on The Athletic published by Pierre Lebrun that goes over a whole bunch of guys. Will the Sedins take on the expanded role with the Canucks? Will Rick Tockett land with the Flyers? This article is from a few days ago. Link will be in the description, but because it is The Athletic, we're not going to be screenshotting it. Instead, we're going over on a Spectres Hockey of yesterday, December 8th, and talking about the Vancouver Canucks there. What is the latest on the Canucks and their search for a new GM? Let's go over to the summary of the athletic piece and take a look at what is written out by LeBron. Pierre LeBron wondered if Henrik and Daniel Sedin will be taking on larger roles within the Canucks organization. He's not sure if they would feel ready to act as co-GMs, but he doesn't rule out that possibility. So firstly, Henrik and Daniel Sedin. Now, these guys, look, it's been established by Aquilini and Smeal that the group of people that's going to be working as the GM kind of team right now, it's going to be Steamer, it's going to be Sedin's, it's going to have Ryan Johnson in there too. There are a whole bunch of players, collab or not players, people collaborating to manage this organization at the top right now in low of having no GM and no official president of hockey ops. However, to me... Even though I love the Sedins, I do think they're first ballot Hall of Famers, they're the greatest Canucks this city has ever been graced with, and I absolutely adore these guys to death, I'm not too sure if they're ready to go out there and be co-GMs just yet. I would probably be more comfortable maybe giving them an extra year or two to just get adjusted to NHL executive life, because they've been here for a while, that indeed is the case, but I don't know what it is, man, I just don't really know if that kind of transition is something that I would immediately be enthralled to seeing, mostly because I think Canucks fans are sort of traumatized from having a GM the past eight years who just didn't really know what to do half the time. So a part of me believes that because the fan base is so 
easy to aggravate with moves like Tucker Pullman and Tyler Myers contract and Good Branson contract and Erickson and all that stuff because we're so irritable at this point. I kind of get scared thinking about the possibility like, okay, the Sedins are brand new in the executive position in the NHL. They're now the co-GMs and they just made their first trade. What if that trade is kind of a bummer? Are we going to start turning on the Sedins right away? Like, I personally don't want to be in a position to even consider starting to hate the Sedins or dislike what the Sedins are doing or what they're thinking about doing and the moves they make because of inexperience. I would rather have them ease into that role a lot more slowly than immediately being thrusted into that spot after Jim Benning gets fired. However, there are indeed other names that are discussed over here, so let's go over those. LeBron also noted former Montreal Canadiens GM Mark Bergevin quickly surfaced as a possible candidate. While Bergevin might benefit from taking some time off before going from one high-pressure hockey city to another, LeBron believes he would listen if the Canucks came calling. He also doesn't rule out former GM Mike Gillis and former assistant GM Lawrence Gilman returning with Gillis as team president and Gilman as the GM. Okay, now before we go over onto Gillis and Gilman, let's go over Mark Bergevin here first. This actually isn't the first time we had seen the Mark Bergevin thing pop up. Ryan Kennedy of the Hockey News said on December 6, I'm hearing the Vancouver Canucks are very interested in Bergevin for the now open GM job. We had ourselves the quotes from Aquilini himself saying, I think Mark just wants to take it easy for a little bit. Also on December December 6, Elliot Friedman on the Jeff Merrick show also said something similar that Bergevin is going to be a candidate for some of these jobs, and so I think will be Scott Mellenby. Mellenby was in Vancouver during the Mike Gillis era, and I can't help but wonder that's someone the Aquilini family would know a little bit. So that's another candidate right there, Scott Mellenby. But when it comes to Bergevin, you know, firstly, there is the personnel personalities that I do think need to play a part in this as well. Scott Wheeler said this, I agree with this 100%. I can't imagine there are many people who are more diametrically opposed in who they are and what they are than Bruce Boudreaux and Mark Bergevin. Forget my opinions on the latter, this just seems like it wouldn't be a good fit. And that should be obvious. And I do believe that, because Bruce Boudreaux, we all kind of know Boudreaux, he is very outspoken, he is very laid back, he's very chill. Bergevin doesn't really work with that kind of coaching staff. Like, ever? Claude Julien was the main Bergevin guy before he got fired, and we all are kind of familiar with the very sort of conservative and laid-back style that Claude Julien plays. Shots from the perimeter and all that stuff. It's the complete opposite of Bruce Boudreaux in a way, and Bergevin as well being the guy that he is. I've said this before, but I do think that Bergevin would make things interesting because the guy goes out there and makes so many trades, which would contrast heavily to what Jim Benning provided Vancouver because he makes no trades, like ever. Bergevin makes trades all the time. However, there also are the hockey fans that are somewhat concerned with the track record of Bergevin, obviously being involved in the Chicago thing, 10 years ago, as well as the drafting of Logan Mayu, other things like that that have gone around throughout the guy's history. Vancouver fans are very passionate when it comes to the people on the team having good track records and having clean slates. Bergevin is the guy that a lot of people are memeing about and saying, oh, if Bergevin goes to Vancouver, he's going to bring Vertanen back and all this stuff. And you can understand why that would be concerning for some fans. Not saying that I agree or disagree with it, I'm just kind of saying that that does exist because I've seen that sentiment present itself everywhere on social media anytime I look at anybody talking about Bergevin and the Canucks. But aside from the stylistic choices and the morality choices as well, there are indeed two more guys that I wanted to highlight in this video over here too. It is Mike Gillis and Lawrence Gilman, the guys who built the best Vancouver Canucks team ever in 2011. Now, would it not be just absolutely crazy if Mike Gillis, who was fired by the Canucks in 2014, were to come back and actually be a part of this organization again in somewhat of a different role? Being the face of the franchise up top, the president of hockey operations, as LeBron points out, that could happen. Just having that expertise and the leadership that Gillis would provide does sound like a really intriguing idea. Not to mention Lawrence Gilman, who is apparently in the running for this entire thing, too. Darren Dreger on TSN said that a few days ago on Insider Trading, so hey, Toronto, we might be getting our guy back over here. Gilman and Gillis were actually a really big pusher of analytics back when they were here in Vancouver, and it actually served the Canucks very well. I mean, they went to the finals, for crying out loud. 
And since then, Gilman has made his way over to Toronto, taking that analytical background with him and actually implementing that into building that team over there. Obviously, cap and stuff makes things difficult for Toronto, but still, having the team that they have, I am a very big fan of the idea of Lawrence Gilman coming back, especially with Mike Gillis acting not as the GM or the guy who's making the trades and the guy who's talking to the media and doing all this stuff, but as the president, just the guy to be the voice for the organization and communicate to the fans what's going on. It would be a very good change of pace, in my opinion, from the, okay, we're going to sign this guy because he's big and he's got leadership qualities and all that. That kind of pattern from Mike Gillis, or excuse me, not Gillis, from Jim Benning, yeah, I would love to go the opposite way and just start talking about, okay, this guy, his advanced stats are good, he does this, he does that. I think the league is heading into a different direction, my friend. And there's a reason why Lawrence Gilman is so highly popular amongst Vancouver Canucks fans. So let me know in the comments what do you think about these ideas over here. Mark Bergevin for the Vancouver Canucks GM job. Henrik and Daniel Sedin being in that mix as well. Lawrence Gilman, Mike Gillis, there are a whole bunch of names over here. Talk to me in the comments. Who do you want to see the most out of these names that we discussed? Do you agree with my Sedins and whether or not it would be a little bit too early to push them into that position? Do you agree with my thoughts on Mark Bergevin? Do you want Bergevin? Do you not? And if it's Gillis and Gilman coming back instead, what are your opinions on that? Talk to me in the comments. What do you think of you enjoyed this? Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>